MoopoEntertainment.com presents Brand Sharks. Chapter 11. Author Mike Duffy. Title Protect Your Digital Assets. Hi, this is Mike Duffy. I am reading Brand Sharks Unstoppable Strategies from Industry Leaders. Author is Ruben Alvarez and contributing authors. This is read by one of the co-authors, Mike Duffy. Chapter 11, Protect Your Digital Assets by Mike Duffy. I was driving down the hospital highway in a brand new Jeep Gladiator on August 23rd, 2021 with my wife, my daughter, and our Border Collie puppy. We're pulling a new to us travel trailer and we're headed to Callaway Park in Calgary, Alberta for a short camping trip. It was our fourth time hauling the new trailer with our Jeep, and we had not experienced any issues since getting it back from the dealership 18 days prior on August 6th. It was in for repair for a melted wiring harness. I was quickly building up my confidence in pulling a trailer, and we are about to crack 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles of hauling experience. Driving a truck and pulling a travel trailer is a brand new experience for my wife and I. It takes patience and courage and nerves. You are always looking for safety concerns. It takes longer to accelerate and brake. You must be fully aware of how wide your turns are going to be. You don't want to get stuck, nor damage your property, nor damage another vehicle. I already scuffed the exterior of the trailer, travel trailer at a gas station at midnight. The first night we pulled it home and we will and will be the source of jokes for my daughter forever. Yes, my daughter points out the damage to the travel t- on the travel trailer to strangers. Passing on the highway is tricky unless you have a long stretch with no oncoming traffic. Windy days can make everything sway and shake while you hold onto the steering wheel with all your might. However, on Monday, August 23rd, the weather was perfect for a short 176 kilometer or 110 mile camping trip. We left the house at around 1230 and had been on the road for about 40 minutes. The odometer just hit 7,077 kilometers, 4,832 miles, which I had just announced to my wife. Who else does that? Do you get excited when your vehicle passes certain odometer milestones? Our confidence with this vehicle purchase was gradually starting to rebuild. We had both wanted a Jeep since we were both teens. Now in my late 30s, I had my Jeep. It was purchased in late May and was returned to the dealer on June 17th and sat there for seven weeks waiting for that melted wiring harness to be replaced. As soon as we had it back, we enjoyed the weekends and quickly accumulated the 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles of towing. As soon as I announced my pleasure with the odometer reading, the Jeep's fancy LCD dashboard suddenly lit up several things at once. Cruise control loss, ignition system needs to be serviced, and finally, press brake and start button to start the vehicle. What the fuck? I noticed smoke and flames at my driver's side window, and a truck driving beside me was honking. I pulled away from the middle lane and onto the shoulder before making sure my wife and daughter and dog made it safely out of the truck. Within minutes, my 2021 Jeep Gladiator with only 7,777 kilometers on it was melted to Stony Trail. The Calgary Fire Department responded quickly, calmly, and stayed for hours. We were home by 5 o'clock, thanks to a friend who bought a truck to pull our trailer, and I am typing this around midnight, still running on adrenaline from my family's near miss. We escaped physically untouched, but emotionally, we will have to take it one day at a time. I tell you this to remind you that disaster will strike when you least expect it. This is something we hear often, but many of us don't take it as seriously as we should. As I so painfully learned, the unexpected can happen in the blink of an eye. Fires, floods, thefts, acts of God, human errors, and hackers strike every day. At some point, it's possible that they will strike you. Are you ready? Throughout your life, you'll experience loss. That is a given. Some of it is preventable, and some of it's not. And there are emotions that come along, regardless of whether the loss is related to property, personal life, or finances. While we cannot exchange its existence in our lives, there is a secret to living with and handling loss. You can get through it without fully losing control of your emotions or being paralyzed by fear and indecision. The secret is simple. Have a plan. Loss almost always comes with unexpected problems, but having a plan beforehand will help you work through them, starting with the most urgent issues. The plan does not need to be complicated or all-encompassing, but it needs to provide you with a starting point. In the event of an unexpected loss, if you already have a plan in place, you'll be able to get yourself to the other side with a better handle on your emotions. Along with those emotions... You'll also need to deal with the financial or time-related components of the loss. Having a plan laid out will mitigate the wasted time and money that often comes with being unprepared. For example, 
When you get a new vehicle, you also get insurance and becoming accustomed to the regular maintenance required by your vehicle. The insurance provides you with a plan for assistance in case there isn't an issue with the car. When you take the car for maintenance, your trusted mechanic will give you advice on when to switch out important items such as oil, filters, brakes, and tires. The same is true of a new house, condo, or apartment. You get insurance, learn how to maintain your home, and figure out how close you are to the nearest fire department or police station in case you ever need those services. What do these two examples have in common? You have set a plan in place. You don't go blindly expecting everything to work out with no planning involved. You pay for the insurance and you take the steps needed to keep everything running smoothly. Why shouldn't you take this approach to the, uh, to the other aspects of your life? Are you ready to protect your current and future well-being by creating a plan to organize and protect those digital assets? Do you have a plan regarding your personal digital files? These are the personal files on your computer, phone, tablet, or digital camera. They also include the files you and your coworkers use each day for professional purposes. Do you have a plan in place for those files if your computer or phone suddenly stops working? Have you established a trusted advisor to assist you in fixing the issue and returning everything to working order? Another thing you need to think about is whether your files are well organized and if you have backed them up sufficiently in a safe place. If hackers use your error or computer hardware failure, flood, fire, storms, or other acts of God happen to impact you and damage your files or wipe out your computer, what is your next step? Critical data loss happens much more frequently than you think. Data backups and a recovery plan are crucial in reducing the stress of dealing with it. Everyone will encounter data loss at least once in their life. According to Backblaze.com, an online backup provider, this statistic is even higher than that. 46% of individuals lose data every year. I've personally experienced several instances of data loss since graduating 21 years ago. Here's my list of data loss encounters I can remember. In high school and university, 96 to 2003, we used floppy disks, look those up, that were used and then trashed when they didn't seem to work or were demagnetized. I lost a few university projects saved on floppies, so imagine the stress when you realize an essay or final project is due the next morning in the library computer which you remember hitting save to a colon forward slash floppy disk drive letter didn't save your files i went to open the files at home to print and get it ready in a binder to present the next morning and you find out you had to redo the entire presentation because something went wrong on the library pc when you hit save i spent many sleepless nights in university redoing work due to transporting floppy disks between home and libraries at some point in 2003 my personal computer died it lasted three years before dying it was replaced under warranty, but anything that was not saved on floppy disks was lost forever. This was two years before my IT consulting career began. I was so devastated that computer was gone and much data loss on that computer. That event triggered emotional trauma and I, that I still remember today. Then USB drives came out around 2003 and replaced those floppies. But USB thumbs or drives are so small and they can easily be broken, corrupted, or left in the laundry to be destroyed by water in the washing machine or melted in the dryer. So yes, small and easily lost and destroyed or they become unreadable and corrupted. Lesson here is to have multiple copies if you don't enjoy heartbreak over lost time. The next traumatizing data loss was around 2006 to 2007. My wife and I went on a carnival cruise in the Western Caribbean for our honeymoon. I had just acquired a Sony Handycam, so it was fancy. I would take pictures on a Sony memory card and video on, a mini on miniature cassette tapes. Since I had already experienced data loss with floppy disks and USB thumb drives in previous years, I needed to take multiple memory cards and tapes to take many photos and videos. The Sony Handycam is used solidly for two years. I stopped using it when it broke my heart and triggered more trauma. Since the videos were saved to 60 or to 120 minute tapes, the only way to rewatch the content was by reviewing the movies on the built-in LCD screen or hooking it up to a TV or a computer. I had dozens of tapes to plug into the computer and convert to digital. Sometime in 2008, I started to digitize those tapes. When I reviewed the honeymoon tapes from 2006, I realized that those tapes had appeared to be defective and there was no audio. I have all this wonderful video footage from our first cruise and there is no audio. Tears and more tears poured. At this point in 2008, I was three years into my career and lost what level of trust I ever had in technology. The rule in our family from then on was to always have two cameras taking pictures and videos, especially on any trips and take so many photos. You create so many cherished memories 
It is a shame to lose any of those memories of trips or hard work creating digital files and intellectual property. This is why I preach that you all need three copies of your data, and at minimum, one of those copies needs to be off-site and preferably out of the way of human hands and human error. I've seen floods and fire wipe out every single computer in an office, and the only saving grace in those situations was a functioning copy of data at an alternate location. I have been working with data and computers since 1994. Yes, I've made a lot of mistakes, have lost files and corrupted pictures. There's been lots of tears and wasted time when I had to recreate work you already spent many hours on. I always knew you needed backups and have spent 15 years refining the process for clients to ensure their specific backup plan is affordable, efficient, and most importantly, is tested regularly to ensure the recovery plan and restoration process works as planned. Backup devices such as USB devices, tapes, etc., can and will fail when you rely on them to work. I've had clients who have stored a USB hard drive in a drawer and only use it once a year to make a full backup. They go to restore files after a computer fails, only to find out the USB drive in that drawer in their desk has died and is, unuse is unusable unless it goes to data recovery services for additional fees. A hacker strikes every 39 seconds. What is considered a hack? Some hackers collect email addresses and passwords from data breaches and will attempt to get into your online banking and credit card accounts. Cause havoc in your email Take down your website, lock your computer and delete all your files, or ask for a ransom, plus many other destructive activities. These data breaches fuel a certain of style of attack called a password reuse attack. This attack involves being told you need to set a new password for your account. When you follow the prompts to change it, the hacker gains access to your account. Most websites advise on using unique passwords for every website you sign up for, and some now even show you how strong your password is before setting it. Not all hacks are orchestrated this way. However, I find it to be one of the most common. This hack is involved in many of the cleanup services and ongoing education and security services I provide to small business owners and municipal clients. Why? Most people use the same email address and similar password across all the websites they use. I also find this to be true when I sit down to review an organization's passwords across all the services they use. The, real, the reality is that data breaches happen regularly. Some popular social media websites have had multiple breaches in the past decade. Each time it happens, millions of email addresses and passwords are leaked, collected, and sold. Need an easy way to see if your email account has been sold or leaked? Go to https colon forward slash forward slash have I been pwned dot com. H A V E I B E E N P W N E D dot C O M. Type in your email account and see which data breaches you have unknowingly been involved in. Once you have the result, do you know which password you use for that website? Is it the same password or similar to passwords that you use for other websites? You may hear about the companies and municipal governments who are hacked and left to pay a ransom to get their files back. You may wonder, why did the organization pay the ransom? It's because they figured out their backups were useless. Those backups were compromised in some way, and when they went to test them and found out they were too old, not usable, not working, etc. Why do I feel compelled to inform, educate, and suggest having a plan when it comes to your digital files? I've experienced thousands of data loss or data corruption incidents through the eyes and emotions of the people I've served over the years. Each story is unique, every experience is different, but at the end of the day, the emotions they experience are generally the same. You know that feeling of butterflies in your stomach when you are excited or fearful of a situation? Your choice is to accept, face that feeling, and take action or attempt to avoid it. I get this roller coaster feeling of emotions, excitement, fear, dread, nervousness all day long, every single day. Most days, multiple times per day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Yes, it really is every single day, every single day since starting this IT career in 2005. In his book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell refers to the 10,000 hour rule. This rule claims that you become an expert in a certain skill set after spending 10,000 hours on it. Break down the hours, 
eight hours a day, five days a week, really seven days a week for compulsive in individuals. That is 3.42 years. At four hours a day and five days a week, let's say 9.6 years. I've spent 16 years dealing with similar types of computer problems for clients every day. I have had a computer since the first Intel Pentium processors came out in 93, 1993. During my professional career, I have earned my 10,000 hours four times over. I'm writing this to share my experience with you and to educate you about having strong, unique passwords, organized data, and multiple backups. Most people who call us for support do not practice these techniques, techniques, nor were they ever taught to. Master these three skills and you will arm yourself with the tools to protect your loved ones. In my experience, very few computer users are organized and know where their data really lives. Most have been using the same device for 10 years with the same desktop layout. One file gets deleted or accidentally buried in a subfolder and then the stress sets in. You waste time trying to retrieve the file to no avail and then the internal shaming begins. People are complex emotional creatures and they will call themselves the worst names. I've been there myself. I am my... I am sure I saved those files. What did I save them as? Did I copy them into the wrong folder? How much time in your life have you wasted looking for lost files? Earlier in my career, I felt compelled to teach others how to be confident as the custodian, protector, and guardian of their digital life. It is my hope that you will see the importance of protecting your digital assets and create a plan to do so. Each human is unique, yet our problems are strikingly similar. We know we need to be we need to responsibly manage our digital footprint. However, there are very few resources which teach us how to do so. As an IT consultant with more than a decade of experience, I have had to work through understanding clients' problems, fears, anxieties, and past data and computer loss trauma. These are overwhelming emotions for both me and my clients. These data organization disasters and losses have led me to periods of depression and anger in the past, and in some cases made me not want to carry on in my pro chosen profession any longer. In March 2019, I was fed up feeling this way. I was in Mexico with my wife and family enjoying, enjoying an Airbnb in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I was living the life in the tropical weather, eating out every day, drinking plenty of beer, and swimming in a private pool. We even had a chauffeur who we could arrange to drive us places. This should have been a dream vacation, but I was miserable. My wife told me I had to change careers or I had to change my business processes. That was over two years ago, and habits are a pain in the ass to change. That vacation started a deep soul search, which continued until... 2021, what changed? I found a community online and educated myself. I also found plans I could work through and execute to further my knowledge. As a result, I began to, I began to ask more probing questions to transform clients and their mindset about their data. I've provided a sample of my questionnaire for new clients at the end of this chapter. These questions work for residential clients and are a starting point for business clients. I needed to remove transactional clients from my client list and move toward transformational clients. The clients who trust you and I can only take on clients who appreciate my time and educate their friends, family, and employees. The transformational clients will take all your recommendations at the end of the day. These clients are learning from your experiences to protect themselves from future emotional traumas that are data loss in nature. In 2019, I was still feeling depressed a buildup of 14 years of providing professional IT services to clients. But I found a plan and started transforming myself with new data. This transformation built up my confidence and brought with it new clients with more sophisticated data disasters. The years of 2020 and 2021 saw over a 30% spike of ransomware clients. Ransomware is when a hacker encrypts all your files on your computers, servers, cloud storage, and demands money to release your files back to you. These clients have been burned by other IT companies. These clients were confident their trusted advisors were looking out for them, and that simply was not the case. Sometimes the backups are encrypted as well, or just aren't the right types, or are too old. These ransomware cleanups can take months or longer to clean up. 
that can be solved easily and effectively through an ounce of prevention and education and asking detailed questions about an organization's data. A ransomware cleanup is going to cost five, six, even seven figures easily. It depends on how big of a target your business is. If you have business insurance, do you know if you are covered adequately? Or is the cost of the ransom and cleanup going to put you out of business? If there are no backups, who is that? Who is paying the ransom to get that data back? I have gone through many insurance company audits. These audits can be hundreds, even thousands of pages, and will point many fingers of blame. This problem can easily be solved by educating yourself and having a plan before disaster strikes. It will directly affect 7 to 8 billion people on this planet. Anyone who uses technology faces the risk of losing critical data, which is directly tied to your time and mental well-being. Because of this, I urge you to stay vigilant. Know where your data is and how to retrieve it if needed. Start building your plan today. Need help? Reach out. Don't get hacked.ca. My data plan. What files do I have and where do I keep them? Types of data. Emails, contacts, CRM data, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, pictures, videos, accounting files, AutoCAD or engineering files. If you have the book, there is a checklist for you to go through. So there's a couple pages of checklist. Where is my data stored? My PC or Mac? USB flash drive or USB thumb drive? Server in the office? A NAS, network attached storage device? Or do you have your files on a cloud service like Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, or Google Drive? What is the value of your data? Doesn't matter if I lose it. I will recreate it without crying. Values under $10,000. Is your, the value of your data over $10,000? Priceless. No amount of money can bring those files back. I will start over. Or my business or marriage will end without those files back. Where are my backups? I don't have any. USB drive, online backup like Carbonite Elephant Drive or Backblaze. Maybe on another computer. Maybe on floppy disks. Maybe in a burnt CD from 10 years ago. Maybe in an off-site location, like a bank safety deposit box or your mom's house. How often are my backups visually checked and tested to confirm they are working? Never. Yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly. How many backup copies of your data do you have? One, two, three, perfect, four, or more. Yay, we are BFFs. At the end of the chapter, there is a lovely about Mike. Thank you for listening to chapter 11. That is the end of Brand Sharks. I am Michael Duffy, co-author of Brand Sharks, Unstoppable Strategies from Industry Leaders. Follow Mike Duffy on Instagram at don'tgethack.ca, D-O-N. T G E T H A C K E D dot C A or go to the Don't Get Hacked website, don't get hacked dot C A. Don't get hacked dot com also works.